Welcome guests tonight. Uh, I'm Steve Borkenhagen and welcome to our fifth community meeting that we've had for Urban Confluence. A couple of little housekeeping items. We are recording this session <clears throat> and if you would like to communicate with us, please use the Q&A function and we will answer all of the questions that we receive through Q&A. The chat function is not being used, so uh, don't try to use chat, just use, use Q&A. So, as I said, I'm Steve Borkenhagen. I'm the executive director of the San Jose Light Tower Corporation. I'll get more into details in just a moment. My partner, Christine Davis, will hopefully be joining us momentarily. We were just having a little technical problem. And uh, Marguerite Lee is the president of the board of directors of the Guadalupe River Park Conservancy. We were hoping Marguerite could join us tonight and talk briefly about the relationship between the Conservancy and our project, but she was not able to make it. Uh, the Conservancy is the steward organization that works with the Parks Department of the city uh, on the on Arena Green and the entire Guadalupe River Park. So they've been great partners for us throughout our project. So what are we trying to do here? We are building an artistically inspired iconic structure. And you might ask, well, why, why would you want to do that? Well, the reason is a few years ago, John Ball and Tom Walmut, who was one of our co-founders and I, we all had the same feeling that there was an important missing link, not just in San Jose, but in all of Silicon Valley, which is a, an iconic object that we strongly identify with our community. Let's call it, for lack of a better phrase, the logo of Silicon Valley or the logo of San Jose. When you think of things like the Eiffel Tower or the Space Needle or the Golden Gate Bridge, they have clear identifications with geographic places. We just have nothing like that. We've got some fabulous buildings. Most of them are private buildings. Uh, the Apple spaceship certainly comes to mind, the NVIDIA headquarters. But these buildings are inward facing, not outward facing. So our goal is to build something that's owned by all of us and enjoyed by all of us and is completely public in every, in every sense. We believe that this landmark can become a real enhancement to downtown San Jose, both for quality of life for all of us who live either downtown or anywhere really within hours where we can come and visit and also drive economic development for our entire area and region. <clears throat> we hope to get tourists from around the world to visit. We certainly think that if we get this right, that when people visit the Bay Area, this will be one of the, one of the don't miss places and places where people will say, absolutely, you've got to go there. No, no trip to the Bay Area would be complete without it. So my partner, Christine Davis, has joined us. Christine, hello. Let's see if your audio is working. It is now. Forgive me for the uh, technical issues. Um, Stephen, the, and welcome, everyone. I'm Christine Davis, the Vice Chair of Silicon Valley uh, Urban Confluence. And it's a great honor to be with you this evening. We won't go backwards. I know, Steve, uh, we play well off of each other and we had some difficulties. So we want to be very respectful of your time and the information that we give you tonight. So, Steve, why don't you just keep rolling there? No problem. So Christine and I will be doing the presentation together and we'll be going back and forth periodically. So thanks, Christine. So why build something public in the time of COVID? Uh, when COVID hit, we had some of our friends and supporters say that uh, it was time to stop. Uh, we felt strongly that it was not the time to stop and that community assets and beautiful things and art have more importance than ever. And we're really glad we stuck with that. I, I think we're all hoping that COVID will be, will be uh, something in our rearview mirror relatively soon. Many of us are getting vaccinated. The, the rates are going down. So we just think that uh, art and beautiful community assets always matter and they're going to really be important to all of us when we get to the end of this COVID period and it, we're all going to be clamoring to get outdoors and uh, we believe that what we what we ultimately produce in a few years at Arena Green will be an important part of our lives moving forward. And then we talk about this being a must-see place of hope, healing, and human connection. Uh, we, I think we all need more human connection right now and, and uh, we, I think we always need healing. And a really important reminder is our project will be a gift to the city of San Jose. That is, there's a park that we, we're being allowed to use. We will, uh, after working with, in partnership with the city and the Conservancy and many, many other 
uh, stakeholders. We will give this as a gift to the city. The way this thing is operated and maintained is not yet determined. That'll happen in the next phase after we have a winning selection. But the park will always be a park and uh, what we are building will become a, uh, owned by the citizens of San Jose. There are very specific design evaluation criteria. I just want to point out, I'm not going to go over all of them now. You can certainly see them on our website. And the jury dealt with these when they selected the three finalists and they'll also be dealing with these criteria when they meet this coming Saturday to rank the three finalists and ultimately uh, hope we select the winner. After they rank the three finalists, we will be going through a lot of outreach and then in early May, we will be on the city council agenda. At that point, the council will uh, hopefully unanimously agree with the rankings. And then we will have a winner at that point after uh, about three years working on the competition and about four years working on our project. Christine, you want to talk a little bit about the site? Uh, sure. This is our site, uh, Arena Green at Guadalupe River Park and Gardens. Um, you know, we went through a site selection process with the city and there were seven um, sites that were, uh, we spent an extensive time in the process of evaluating which one would be best for our project. This one here came out um, hugely the top one by a large percentage, I think it's 29 or 30 percent higher in its evaluation than any of the rest of them. And our team was actually quite excited uh, when this time came. It is, it's um, certainly in the new core of downtown San Jose, you know, right in the center of, you know, the very popular and successful SAP Center. Uh, and then where the new Google project is going to be, the Deerdon Station. And we're just real excited about the opportunities that we have. The west side and the east side were both available uh, opportunities for the actual um, project to go. And you can see as we later get into this, uh, where each one of those has been placed. And that decision was made along with all of our stakeholders and the city of San Jose. Thank you, Christine. Uh, our donors are uh, critical to everything that we've done. Um, we're incredibly grateful to them. This is a list of our largest donors. We have about 400 donors, including uh, people all the way down to a dollar or five dollars. We appreciate all of them. We are a community building this together. So we hope ultimately to have uh, thousands, if not tens of thousands of donors to something that we will be giving to our children and our grandchildren and everyone who comes after all of us. Uh, we're all the beneficiaries of wonderful gifts that we've received from, from people in the past. And we wanna similarly make a gift to all the people of the future. Our partner organizations are not just critical, but necessary for us to do what we've done. Without the mayor and the council, uh, we again could not move forward. This is a city park, so it's controlled by, by the city, by the mayor and the council. As I mentioned earlier, the Guadalupe River Park Conservancy is a critical partner. They are the stewards of the park. Uh, we've had a great relationship with city staff across a number of different departments. Our most important liaisons have been Nicole Burnham at Parks, Recreation, and Neighborhood Services. We really could not be where we are today without, without Nicole's help. Also, Michael Ogilvie in the Office of Cultural Affairs, and in particular, Michael O'Connell, who is retiring soon from the Department of Public Works. He's a deputy director and has really given us a lot of excellent guidance. Uh, Bill Eckern is a, a city um, employee who runs the Deer Don area and Bill also has great deal of wisdom. He's been working on downtown San Jose, I think his whole career, uh, if not for 30 or 40 years. And uh, we really appreciate Bill's wisdom that he shares with us uh, all the time about the area that, that we're building in. Uh, County of Santa Clara gave us a generous $100,000 gift. Little Italy and our friend Josh Melander have really been helpful to us. Uh, Spur and Ms. Michelle Huttenhoff, uh, she attends our stakeholder meetings and has, has uh, offered a lot to us. Uh, we've had many meetings with uh, uh, the management team at the Sharks, and they're, they're really great partners. Uh, they have lots of plans for the area around SAP Center. None of them are quite clear right at this moment, but we really hope to be working with them as project partners because uh, they're one of the most important economic engines in the city and something that I think most of us uh, are probably more proud of than anything else in our city, and that's our, 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 our Sharks for the last 30 years. Uh, Valley Water is critical because they control the river and the creek. Uh, Knight Foundation has funded many of the important initiatives around the park and has really 
focused on making this park great. Um, Christine and I and our partner John Ball and many others think that this park offers the best opportunity for a real jam in our in the middle of our downtown as far as green space and rivers and, and creeks are concerned. Uh, Joint Venture has been generous to us. Uh, downtown Association has been a partner forever and uh, the downtown residents and uh, in our groups of emerging leaders and advisory council uh, represents hundreds of people literally who have come to meetings and supported us directly. Also, we had a community competition panel of 33 local leaders and they uh, went through all of the submittals and recommended 47 of them to the jury and we're grateful to them. Christine, you want to talk about the jury? Uh, yes, we have a panel of 14 people on the jury. As you can see, they all the way to the left here is Jody Starbird. Down to the bottom right is uh, John Ball, who is our board chair and one of the founding members of uh, San Jose Light Tower Corporation, which is now the DVA uh, Urban Confluence. The expertise amongst these 14, there are um, half of them that are local San Jose uh, residents and business people, and then about 70% of them that actually come from the Bay Area. And they range in all these uh, many different expertise from architecture to um, lighting to landscape to business people to the community uh, architect uh, artist and um, they come from like I said that we do have uh, one gentleman is all the way from um, um, the Netherlands the Netherlands <laughs> I want to say Newark for some reason okay. <laughs> sorry sorry about that and uh, we're just very proud of their diligence um, Steve and I both witnessed the whole process with the jury when they made the selection to the three finalists and they are very detailed uh, and across the board with their line of thinking and we're very confident in their uh, collective efforts here coming to this next weekend, March the 6th, when they will rank the three finalists for the top second and third uh, rankings and then that will go you know, to the city of San Jose for approval. Thanks, Christine. And I, just to reiterate what Christine said, she and I got to sit there. We were not members of the jury, but we witnessed every minute of it. And these are really caring, smart people. And they were all in in a way that I never would have expected for, for people, especially those who are not from the area. So we, we're really grateful to have a world-class jury. So we had an open ideas competition that lasted about a year. Uh, we got 963 qualified submissions from 72 countries on six continents. Uh, we like to joke, uh, Antarctica, where were you? But uh, seriously, uh, we were probably the most successful ideas competition in the world in 2020, and we we're really proud of the hard work we did. And that doesn't happen automatically. We uh, marketed this all over the world for the better part of a year. Uh, actually had over a thousand submittals, but 963 qualified based on our rules of engagement. And so the jury in uh, last August selected um, the three finalists. Uh, all submissions were anonymous. It's really important that we wanted everyone to be on an uh, even playing field. And we did that with a lot of intention so that a, some young designers would have a chance against the architects and the people with great reputations. And sure enough, two out of our three finalists are just uh, young men, one born in China, one born in Japan, and they ended up being two of the, of the top three out of 963. Uh, our third finalist was born in Spain, but lives now in Australia. And uh, we really feel strongly that uh, strong, spectacular public spaces are what makes urban life wonderful. And so we're really pleased to be part of what we think will be the solution and the, the next great step for not just San Jose, but really for Santa Clara County and the Bay Area to have a, another uh, great park and uh, iconic place to go. Christine, you wanna talk about the phases a bit? Yes, we are now in phase two. But phase one was our open ideas competition, which Steve has just referenced uh, previously, which went from July of 2019 to July of 2020. Um, at the end of that, we had the three finalists. And phase two we're in now, which is the very comprehensive program um, with the submissions. Uh, that started in September of 2020. And um, the each of the finalists were given a stipend of $150,000 to refine, to further refine their, um, their submissions. 
and there was a criteria, long criteria, that each and every one of them had to fulfill. Um, at the end of their, I think it was January the 18th when those were submitted, we also had another um, board that was put together and they went through each of the different submissions to make sure that they had qualified and done everything that they were called to do. And we were happy that that was, um, you know, everything was fulfilled, actually quite impressed. And I just like to say, if you have not had a chance to look at those um, complete submissions, they're on our website and we will be showing you uh, videos from each one of the submissions tonight, but they really don't do each of the presentations um, justice. And I really would like to ask each and every one of you, because it's real important for us to get feedback from, from all of you. And we wanna take that to the jury this next Saturday. And so if you'll look at each one of them had two hours, one hour was actual presentation and you'll get to meet uh, a lot of the team. They're very impressive teams that they put together. And then there was an hour long uh, Q and A with the teams and the jury. And that will, um, I know a lot of you will be having questions a little bit later in the last four of our phase two community uh, meetings that we've had, we've had about 150 questions that have come through that and been you know, asked and answered, but it will really help you with the um, really getting a much more depth of each one of these presentations by listening to the complete presentation and then the things that the jury, the people that we, you know, the team that we are depending on to make this uh, very crucial decision. You'll see what their questions were. And then we will, on um, May the 4th, we will go before the city council for approval. Then phase three, that goes into a much more detailed design development. Once we have the final winner, and that's been accepted, it will go into a much more detailed and comprehensive program. And that will begin about May of 2021. Then of course, uh, phase four, phase five, and phase six goes you know, into the permits, partnerships, the capital campaign, of course, the construction. Um, I don't believe that Steve had an opportunity because our, our slight problem in the beginning, but to talk a little bit about our board chair, John Ball, if you don't happen to know him, he was a founding member of the San Jose Light Tower. He's also a jurors, one of the reasons he's not on our um, community competition meetings but he's also spent 40 years of a very, very successful career building large things, large construction. So his knowledge is just, um, you know, it, it's, it's so crucial to this whole project that we are so confident with his interaction uh, from start to completion that when we start digging that dirt, you just gotta be very confident in everything that John Ball uh, brings to the table. And then phase six, of course, will be ongoing with our operations and maintenance. And we're working on all of those um, refinements at this particular point. Thanks, Christine. And, and something that we missed because Christine wasn't here in the very beginning was who is Christine? So I did mention she's the vice chair and, and um, our partner in this, but Christine has been a business owner, a community leader and a philanthropist and a resident downtown for 30 or 40 years, uh, as I have, and uh, we're old friends. And we, we both have the burning passion to both clean the park and the rivers and also make them magnificent. So uh, Christine's a great partner. Christine, thank you. You know how much I appreciate all of your work. Yours too, Steve. Thank you, Christine. Now, Christine, why don't you take this project vision slide and I'll take the next one. Yeah, you know, and going back to that just a little bit, as you can tell, I like to call Steve the walk-in encyclopedia of our project as our executive director. But yes, I've lived downtown for 35 years, and it's really important to me uh, and very passionate part of, of being on this project is <laughs> making sure that our green space is protected and it's improved and it's kept that way and, you know, part of a legacy for this whole community. And that the, it's important for everyone to know, because we always get asked this question, is the park going to be taken over? No, it's going to be a park will always be a park. Our goal is to create a spectacular uh, urban, uh, 
you know, gym because the, you know, the center of any community should be the pride of the community. And we all know that there's some areas, many areas along this river here that we need to help uh, do a better job with environmentally for the birds and the fish and for the people that live here. And all the money that's raised to improve uh, and do this project is privately by the San Jose Light Tower. We have had, as we mentioned on the fundraising that we've had so far, we've had tremendous community support that's come out and continues to, and then we'll go into our capital phase to raise money for the actual project once that uh, phase three is over. It's important for you all to know that it's not gonna impact the spending on public services, including um, the homeless situations and feeding the hungry. Almost every one of the 400 people that we have that have financially supported us on top of the group that supports us in so many other ways, in kind and services, they all give to all of these different areas for our community. It's really a very, very uh, loyal and philanthropic group that has bound ourselves together here and bonded to make this happen. And so we just want everyone that's listening tonight and for anyone else that you may talk to about this project along the way to, to think that we're not giving up something to, to take care of this project, that we're all collectively working together. It's also important to know that the, the, you know, the different developments around Agreena Green, which I believe are also part of the reason that the city uh, chose this as the number one site. Of course, everyone knows about the Google Downtown West project that will, um, has been worked on for many years and they will go before the city uh, along the same time frame that we will for approval of that. We've been working with them on having their one of our stakeholders and every month we have a lot of communication with them. Deer Dawn Station and the BART Station, um, of course, you know, the different, you know, um, investors and developers, the J Paul project, the Adobe building, who's, you know, Adobe's been downtown for 25, almost 30 years, and now they're building uh, their second big uh, tower. And then, of course, the San Jose Sharks, um, an anchor of downtown, such an important part of this whole community. And uh, we're just very proud. And, of course, there's many others. That's not the only five that are in this area here. But it's important for everyone to know that we're really, as stakeholders here, and as part of the community, it's important that we all work together to make these improvements and see the big vision for um, this whole, that whole area, not just the urban confluence Silicon Valley art project that some like to call it. It's much bigger than that. And we look at this as something that not only San Jose, but Silicon Valley, but the world will look to and admire and as we give this to the city of San Jose. We, we really believe that the the epicenter of downtown is going to shift about a quarter of a mile or half a mile to the west near all of these things that Christine just outlined. So uh, the result of all this development will be that Arena Green will really be the kind of the center of the universe, we think, for downtown San Jose. We got a number of questions about these items during uh, our first couple of community meetings. So before you ask lots of questions, I wanted to answer them. So in phase three, which will happen as soon as we have a winner identified, we immediately will go into the details around riparian corridor protect protection. Just a reminder, Los Gatos Creek and Guadalupe River meet on the site. So what's called Confluence Point is the triangular kind of pie-shaped uh, section that's on the south side of the project. And so the riparian corridors are, are absolutely critical, uh, both environmentally and also just aesthetically having rivers is obviously a huge benefit. Uh, this will be a net zero project, so we will be uh, generating electricity on site. Security and safety and ADA compliance will all be part of the next phase as they would for any large structure that's being built. That, that would include elevators. And then we'll be working on a park activation plan and a master plan with all of the stakeholders. In fact, again, a reminder, the Guadalupe River Park Conservancy is the steward of the park. We are not the stewards of the park. We're just doing a project. So we work with them all the time. And ultimately a master plan will be developed by the Parks and Recreation Department in addition to the Conservancy, in addition to other stakeholders, and ultimately the city council will be the decision maker. Also, I want to remind everyone that we think daytime and nighttime and indoor and outdoor activities are all important. And so our ultimate plan will end up having all of those elements. 
As Christine mentioned earlier, operations and maintenance uh, plans will be developed later, but they're critical. Many people, especially large funders, the first thing they ask is, this, is this thing gonna be cleaned and maintained and painted and kept beautiful? And our answer is yes, whatever that takes, we are going to do, whether it's an endowment or, or generating lots of earned income that can be used. We're already meeting with an organization that's ex expert in getting corporate support for uh, projects like ours that generate ongoing cash flow. And so we'll be working on that as soon as the, the, the winner is selected. Uh, no one knows the status of the carousel. It may stay at Arena Green forever, or it may be moved. Some people think it should be over near the play garden. That has not been determined yet. And just a reminder, like Christine was talking about related to the homeless challenge and crisis that we have now, we can't solve that alone, but we can be part of the solution and we intend to do that. So we, we work uh, constantly with other stakeholders who are working on that massive problem, not just for San Jose, but for our, our whole country. And, uh, and again, I mentioned uh, the, uh, the master plan. So that being said, uh, Mike Hubert will now show three videos of the three finalists. These combined take uh, the better part of 15 minutes. So uh, if for some reason you want to get up and take a break, uh, you could do that and you can clearly watch these videos anytime they're on the landing page on our website. So with that, Mike Hubert.
Welcome to Wonderland is a realization of surreal literature. The experience transports you into a fictional character that challenges your cognitive ability. Silicon Valley has long been known for pushing boundaries in technology. The Welcome to Wonderland team is incredibly special. Companies that make up our team have experience designing and building complex and iconic structures around the globe. The multi-scale flora is packed into a huge figurative imaginary box measuring 100 feet wide by 225 feet long and 200 feet high. The structural system of Wonderland is a fusion of traditional framing integrated with an organically geometric composition of support for the gigantic flora. The entire biome of Wonderland is anchored to the earth at the central elevator and stair tower through a structural steel braced frame system. We have analyzed the constructability of the piece and have proved out the elements required to execute this immersive experience. Wonderland pushes the envelope of structural creations. A number of materials will be used to fabricate the various flora. The materials will deliver slightly varied textures, especially in close proximity to the sculpture. Materials used at grade and within patron spaces will have softer edging conditions. Our team has looked at every aspect of the project, from meeting building codes to stair towers and structural systems. So it is safe and secure. We have explored multiple material finish options and confirmed longevity and maintainability. We envision Riche as a caretaker of not only the opening day experience for the people of San Jose, but the ongoing experiences of the many generations to come. The experience is the intertwining between two different worlds. The juxtaposition of artificial nature against real nature allows you to dream or rethink the, the familiar world in a fantastic new way. An organic structural frame springs from the traditional framing to emulate the stems, sepals, and styles of the flora. The biomimicry provides for a seamless integration of the structural system with the artistic vision. The three components of the structural system, the braced frame core, the floor and ramp framing, and the organic flora structural support system are tied together as a unified whole to resist the environmental and seismic forces that Wonderland will need to resist. Wonderland entices and invites you to explore. Like Alice, you become curiouser and curiouser. In the novel, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Alice says, being so many different sizes in a day is very confusing. As you move deeper inside, the oversized flower imparts a feeling that you are physically growing smaller with every step you take. The flora relates to each other by touching, leaning, and intertwining to produce a multitude of spatial qualities and experiences. Our project protects the repairing corridor and meets the goal of net zero. Our approach to net zero starts by sustainable design. We want to get to zero by first looking at conservation and efficiency before reviewing on-site renewables and purchasing renewable energy credits and carbon offsets. While this project shows its innovity in stillness during the daytime, it transforms its artificial nature into a vibrant, colorful bouquet at night. Projection brings the biome to life via digital canvas of over 55 million pixels across the east side of the sculpture. Images of creatures, animated textures, and visual effects combined with localized audio will surprise and excite guests. Projection mapping on the exterior brings the flora to life with dynamic colors and textures. As the sun sets, Welcome to Wonderland awakens a world of color. The bottom of the sculpture gradually illuminates, reaching upwards until it's entirely engulfed in color. 
on the interior, larger than like hologram creatures, allows you to experience an enjoyable and yet slightly unsettling environment. Welcome to Wonderland is poised to become a global icon, and the nighttime lighting experience will not only rival the lighting of icons around the world, but may also inform how they might look in the 21st century and beyond. Once you've been to Wonderland, you will always remember the sensation of being in a magical world. Returning to your ordinary world will never be the same. Welcome to Wonderland is a local landmark, but sets the stage to become a worldwide sensation. When we think about a contemporary landmark, we are envisioning something that connects the future and the past, something that recalls our emotion of the places and represents the identity of the city. A nebula is a massive cloud of dust and gas between stars acting as a nursery for new stars. What we need today for a city is not a monolithic monument, but something we can engage, something soft, ever-changing, and adaptable. As a great historical icon, the old San Jose Light Tower rendered the visionary courage of the pioneers of the city. Although the city is depicted as a technical vision hub today, we would like to remind people that our city is built and evolved from generation to generation. The traditional characteristic of a light tower as a figure is inverted into a spatial void. How we behold it becomes more nebulous. It's like your memories. They may look ambiguous, they may fade away, but they will unfold at a certain moment. for the Nebula Tower is to bring time and light together and to create a hybrid prototype of diversity. It's an inverted tower and an arched gate. It's an arena for civic space and an observatory for the city. It's a structured vessel for lighting and a canvas for all artists. Our collective memory and our imagination are the bridges of our innovative spirit and our city. And those are what enable us to transcend the time and explore things beyond the boundaries. Thank you, Mike Thank you. Hubert, for doing that. Christine, you want to fill people in on the next slide? Uh, yes. Before we go uh, forward with the uh, remainder of any Q&A that you might have, we just want to again thank everyone for uh, your time this evening and let you know that we do have uh, two more, at least two more community meetings scheduled. Both of them are uh, post the jury's uh, deliberations this next week. One is on Monday, March the 27th, excuse me, 22nd, that's from 6 to 7. And then the uh, next one is Tuesday, March the 30th from 5.30 to 6.30 in the evening. And as I said a little bit earlier, but I want to reiterate it again just one more time to, uh, as you can see now, after seeing those videos, I hope that it gets your curiosity up enough for those of you that have not, and I know I can see the people that are on here that many of them um, 
have probably seen them before, but do take the time to go through those submittals because a lot of the extensive uh, questions and pique in your interest and in what each one of them um, represents and the, the very, very prestigious teams behind them will be advantageous to um, your you know, confidence in the project. Um, another thing I just like to point out, you know, kind of back to um, our vision of this project was it's a transformational project and it's purposely, our purpose was it's for the people and to be inclusive and to provide connectivity for everyone. Because Steve mentioned it earlier, we all need a place of hope and healing and a human connection. And for regardless of whether you live downtown or you work downtown or you live in any part of Silicon Valley or the nation or around the world. We really see this as a place um, that's gonna recognize in the time period that it has been evolving and it gets um, you know, the, the selected winner and the evolution of that selected winner design is in a time that the whole nation is healing and needs to come together for uh, just a place of of um, knowing that, there, that, that nature, in harmony with nature, that you have something to be very, very uh, proud of. And so I just wanted to reiterate that to what our purpose was, not just in the beginning, but it gets stronger you know, every week, every month, as we go through many, many uh, meetings and the phases here that we just know that what we're doing, because a lot of people had told us, you know, during this time, maybe you need to back off, but we decided not to do that. Most all of our advice was just keep rolling, keep rolling and don't ease up. And so we're very proud of that decision. It's also important for you to know that, um, that if anyone has any accommodations that we have not met so far, as far as being able to listen to the, um, presentations or listen to the community meetings. They are being translated into Spanish as well as Vietnamese. But if you have any other needs, please just contact Steve. His email's right there on the screen and his telephone number is towards the bottom of the screen and we can make those uh, sort of accommodations for you. And all of the community meetings are listed on our website too, if you'd like to go back to any of them. We try to keep the content very much the same with the exception of uh, questions that come up sometimes in the community meeting that we feel we might as well just address them, you know, up front rather than wait for that question to uh, be asked again or asked in a different way. And the, all of these meetings are, they're critical to our, the success of this project because it's not just about our board or our advisors or our donors. It's going to take the whole community, the nation and the world coming together here. And that was our you know, that was our goal from the inception, is to build something that was um, not just about technology, not at all necessarily about technology. It's about the innovation, the spirit of innovation of Silicon Valley. Um, and then just uh, before we close, um, Steve, shall we ask if there's any other uh, Q&A? looks like there's one more that's down there that hasn't been uh, answered in my... Yeah, I'm answering that one right now. The question on the Q&A was, uh, was there any mention of when the winner will be chosen? This, this coming Saturday, the jury will deliberate. They will rank the three finalists. We'll have some more communication with um, the community and city council and others between this Saturday and May 4th, and then the council will consider the rankings on May 4th. We hope to get unanimous support of the rankings that the jury recommends, but the council will be able to do whatever they like, but we're hoping by early May to have the winner selected and then we'll move into our next phase. Another question, uh, each submittal appears to be shown and designed as an independent project within an existing urban realm. When will the designs engage in surrounding sites? Uh, very good, good question. The context of the park matters. Uh, the activation strategies that we come up with will all be driven by the specific winning design. That is, we've never thought that we should take a design and just plop it into the park and uh, walk away. So the entire park uh, will be designed in conjunction with our partners, especially the Parks Recreation Department and the Conservancy. But also as we work into the next phases, we'll be looking at the surrounding uh, areas, in particular the Google project, and see uh, how our 
our design should respond to that. Somebody said thank you. We always appreciate a pat on the back. So thank you all. Uh, I've got a few other brief notes before we close. Uh, we've got 10 or so more minutes though, if anybody does want to ask questions through Q&A. Uh, the, qu the question of the height of the project comes up often. It's approximately 200 feet, which is approximately twice as high as SAP Center to give you a, a sense. Uh, SAP Center is somewhere between 110 and I think 117 feet tall, and we can go up at appro approximately 200 feet. A number of people noticed that in the videos, it looked like there were no railings or there were clear glass railings that looked quite dangerous. Uh, I just want to reassure you, these were just renderings that were obviously trying to make each of the three designs look spectacular. And I, I think they all succeeded to some extent. But we will have railings that are greater or higher than what's required by code. Safety is our number one consideration. So you can count on the fact that we're not going to build something that uh, where there's danger to jump off or fall off. The phase three potential for activation, I, I want to just reiterate how much our team, Christine, John, and I, along with all of our advisors, has consistently believed that activations in the park, whether it's the ability to buy a, a beer or an ice cream or food or having a history center or a nature center or docent tours or whatever it might be, <clears throat> those things are equally as important as this landmark. Uh, they all have to do with the experience. At the end of the day, this is a place that we're building. It's a place, and places speak to speak to us deeply in our in our hearts and our souls. And so, when you arrive at this park, when we're done, we sure hope that the uh, hair on the back of your neck stands up, and you have this feeling of wonder and awe. And that's what we're trying to do. And you, you all know, design's difficult, and it's very subtle. But we are working uh, our darndest to to make that happen, and and uh, plan to be successful. Over time, also, just a reminder that things don't end tonight when this meeting ends. Uh, as Christine mentioned earlier, you can call me anytime. I'm incredibly easy to find. You can also make comments on our website if you want to make sure that the city council and the mayor and the city manager sees those comments. Every comment that is, uh, that is posted on our website will be shared with them. Another question from an attend, uh, one of the attendees, the city is planning to install a series of large digital billboards along freeways on city property and in public spaces throughout downtown, including two on the SAP center site and two along the 87 freeway. Have there been any considerations as to how these large LED lit displays may negatively impact the visual aesthetic of whichever design is chosen, especially at night? Uh, I've been passively following this, I believe that a decision was made at City Council in the past week, but I can't remember the specifics about it. I want to say that the brakes were put on this a little bit, but I may be incorrect about that. But what I can say definitively is that whatever is allowed, we will study and be careful because we want the, the sight lines and the enjoyment of our, of our project to be maximized at all times. So I, I, again, I don't know about these LED display details. Uh, but we are we are certainly curious and we'll be we'll be working on that. Number of questions have come in about construction methods, how we're going to build this, who's going to build it. We are currently meeting with construction professionals, very respected people, about what method we will use. Uh, and there, there are a number of methods that are used to build large structures. We don't know yet which one we will use, but we're studying it in detail. If you have opinions about it, you're certainly welcome to weigh in either with a phone call or with a comment on our website. Also, a common question is about our, our completion schedule. Well, since we don't have a winning design yet, we couldn't have a schedule yet. But we'll, we'll have a schedule developed over the next few months as soon as the winner is selected. So by, by this summer, we should have a schedule that will, will be posted on our website. If anybody has any final questions, please put them in the Q&A. Christine, do you want to uh, wrap up in any way? Well, I just want to again thank everyone. I know that your time after work or this time of night is very precious to you and the fact that you're interested enough in our project uh, to take this hour uh, really means a lot to John, Steve and I and, and everyone that's involved here. And also to reiterate Steve's mention about, you know, the activation. A lot of our donors and, and advisors and stuff like that that have been 
uh, long-standing philanthropist business people here in Silicon Valley in San Jose, the roots of San Jose. They are really giving us um, a lot of encouragement and advice on how to go about along with some consultants that we're using on the best way to activate it because we want we want this to be a place where your families come to uh, and they don't just come and look at it and take a picture or a selfie and leave. Uh, as Steve said, you know, it's important for, you know, the businesses around it and uh, restaurants and, and curios and, and, you know, everyone to be a part of the opportunities for economic growth. People that will come um, from overseas when it's the, you know, the kids are on vacation. We see this being a large attraction, which will bring additional economic growth to our downtown area for restaurants, hotels. And so just the activation part of this, and it's very, very, um, it's just heartwarming to see a lot of the designs. Each one of the finalists uh, had a, you know, placemaking uh, person on their team and, uh, you know, dig down in and you see some of that in the videos and stuff like that. So they've all got their ideas, but that will all be worked out into the phase three and phase four area. And so I just want to reiterate that again, that this is a place uh, for everyone to feel inclusive. There will be, um, we didn't talk about elevators. You know, each one of them has elevators. So regardless of capabilities, there's ramps, there's stairs, there's elevators. So anyone can, you know, explore any portion of any three of these uh, finalist designs. Some have, you know, places where you can have uh, viewing points at different, at different levels. And so it is uh, real important for us to know that it's not something you're just gonna walk up to. One of the questions was about taking a picture. Can I take a whole picture of it? Well, we certainly hope so. And, um, you know, that's a big portion is, you know, it's a, it's a postcard moment. But the profound power of what this is going to bring to our community is that it's not just about a thing. It's about really, it's about advancing the humanities and bringing people together in a common space where, you know, back to the birds and, and the fish and nature and for it to be a healthy place. And that's what, to, to me, that's what this icon stands for. So we really thank each and every one of you again. Uh, I just want you to always remember that at the confluence of two rivers, worlds, lies the world's next iconic landmark. And we're all anxious to see what that will be and the impact that will have on this community and serving the humanity. So thank you very much. Have a good evening and God bless you. Thanks, Christine.